Hello, audience. I'm talking with Patrick Facemeyer, who received in the mail yesterday three pens that I sent him to play with, and he's been enjoying all three. And uh, we're going now. We're going to talk out loud with you. And um, he's back to the first pen he tried, which is a Schaefer, uh, with has which has a pretty tight little nib with a little tiny bit of flexibility and I'll have him describe it now because he uh, now he knows it so well he knows it intimately more or less so Patrick to you I'm certain um, I'm not certain how to describe it exactly uh, if I were to put it in terms of a dip pen uh -huh. I suppose uh, I would put it in a little bit more like a, I think they call it a Kabara pen in Japan, where it's mm -hmm. it doesn't have much line width, but it's consistent and it doesn't want a railroad okay. uh, like a Croquil pen might. Okay. It doesn't have quite the same amount of flexibility as something uh, as something wider or something like that, but it has a nice flex to it, and mm -hmm. it, you can get a lot of lines out of it very quickly. Okay. Well, start drawing. Okay. And we'll just um, one of the things that uh, I've noticed about Patrick is how he holds the pen. He rather than holding it way down by the nib, he sort of holds it pretty far back as you can see. Um, one thing that I've been, I've been, I've been playing with the pen, drawing with my Schaefer, the same as you're drawing with yours right now, and um, I'm sometimes afraid that I'm gonna the the pen will slip out from under the cap, and I'll be holding the cap. So you do have to sort of make sure you're holding the barrel of the pen, not the cap, um, but pretty close to where the cap is. And it's it's a very interesting feeling for me because I feel like I don't have control over it, but actually I have even more control. With my, you know, moving my fingers just a little bit, the pen moves really, really far. But it takes some time getting used to. So back, yes. to, back to you, you drawing a... I looks like you're drawing an eye. Yes, basically. <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes I'm just not entirely certain exactly what's going to come out. Okay. Uh, but that I try not to let that bother me. <laughs> no. uh, especially when I'm just doing something inconsequential. Yeah. I know that that sometimes there are artists who know exactly what every line is going to look like before they even open the sketchbook. They have it planned in their little head so much. And other people, you know, don't have any idea and they just let the pen tell them what to do. I'm sort of in between. I have a... I, I don't have a very strong attention span, I guess. Long, you know, short. I have a short ex attention span. I can wander. Um, if you're able to move the sketchbook a little bit toward your right, okay. That way, I'd see. There we go. That's fine. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Um. You'll also note how Patrick holds the pen. He's holding it almost like a lefty holds a pen when they're writing. He's he the pen is coming down from the top, um, and that's not very common. But it's sort of how he's been drawing, or how I've been watching him draw. He tends to. Hold the pen from above. I don't know where I learned it from, but you know, I think if you you do you start doing some pretty weird things if you learn to 
do draw or do really anything independently mm. i think yeah. and because nobody corrects you yeah. and you just sort of end up doing your thing yeah well i it, it, there's nothing wrong with the way you're drawing at all in fact i think it almost makes more sense because your your canvas is more easily visible because your hand is not and your arm isn't covering half of it if you're drawing you know on the top of the page um, but it does mean that the thick lines that you make happen only when you're going uphill you're 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 yeah, making yeah. A, a line going from the middle of the page to the top of the page um, which is fine there's nothing wrong with that it's just it's just opposite of what I do and what most people do. I think most people have their hand to the side of the drawing or below, you know, the drawing. And you're, or the, the, the point of the pen is below, I'm sorry, their hand is below the point of the pen, whereas your hand is sort of above the point of the pen. Another thing that Patrick likes to do is to draw with the pen upside down to get the really, really thin line. And I noticed him doing this with his modern pen. It's a platinum pen? Yeah, the uh, platinum preppy. And, you know, it, it doesn't get as thin lines as this shaper no, here. No. Well, because it's modern, I mean, most people, if you sold that pen that, that you're using right now to someone over the counter that's never used a pen before, they'd say, gee, it's scratchy. So Yeah, they and would, it is. It, it feels it, scratchy, but it works really well. It feels scratchy because it's a fine nib. You know, you can't, yeah. you can't help but have it feel scratchy. But a modern pen company will not make a pen that does that because they want to sell it. And they're not gonna. Yeah. They would. They, they would never. They want people to feel like it feels right. <laughs> yeah. So they would never be able to sell a pen like that. Uh, so it looks now that you're drawing a cat-like, cat-like creature. Yeah, it started with, out as a cat, and it's starting to look like a dog now. I'm yeah, not entirely big, certain what it is, but uh, <laughs> big jolly. Yeah, you know, it's happening regardless of what I'm, <laughs> what I want to do. So. I see. Well, you're do, you're practicing we'll you're practicing yeah. animal husbandry. Yes, yes. Or, or evolution. The famous uh, the famous Gustafsson school <laughs> yes. of animal husbandry. Yeah. Um, Patrick is referring to a video I have of me creating love childs of different species. The dog and the swan made a swag. And I was also using different pens to draw the creatures. And uh, the, the pens I would choose were also the, quote, love children of their parents. So a, a f very firm, fine nib and a wet, sloppy, flexible nib created, as you would imagine, their love child would be a semi-flexible pen. So... Um, it was it after the second or third generation. It was too much, too many brain cells were required to understand what the fuck I was doing. So I gave up and just drew the animals. That was hard enough without changing the pens to match. But um, it is fun having the pen sort of tell you what to draw. So. If this isn't going to destroy your drawing, now could you pick, put down that pen and grab the second pen? Yeah, sure. Uh, the, the Faber. Faber, the, the Faber, Faber, Faber the whichever. Fa Eberhardt Faber yep. uh, pen. This one right here. And that pen has a broader nib that's also a little bit more flexible than the Schaefer. And not that this is going to turn your animal into something else. You can, but I'd like you to draw on the same page just so we can see. Yeah. How, how this is. How everything how, works. How this was working. So. Um,
and Pat Patrick is dipping the pen because he's we're using ink that he may not end up using later. Uh, yeah, we're it's just a, sort of an, an unknown quantity at the yeah. moment. We don't know how it will react to these pens. No, it's a it's if I if I was positive that it wasn't going to screw up the pens, it's a platinum ink that's for fountain pens, right? Yeah, it is for fountain pens. It it should it should be fine, but we're just dipping them right now. Yeah, and, we're just being careful. And the and the and all of that first amount of drawing you did was just on one dip, correct? On the shaver. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a it's surprising how long and I found this particularly with the Waterman. Yeah. Uh, which is a because... pen that he'll show later. Oh yeah, you no. can. It's surprising just how long it'll go on a single little dip. And I was actually going to ask you earlier, you know, uh, in terms of just the line quality, uh, uh, is there going to be any difference between what I'm getting when I uh, actually load them with ink? You might get a slight different quality they might run they might run a little bit wetter but they might not you you will find or you can find that if you a sign that your pen is almost out of ink is if it starts writing really wet and it's oh, yeah. uh so you right now it's almost like you're running out of ink you know so it might yeah. be it might in fact be wetter now than it will be when it's full but you'll discover that on your own and pens aren't yeah. always consistent they're all individual so now that you're using that pen are you drawing differently than you were when you're drawing the other one or are you, or are you trying to imitate the Schaefer in terms um, of the lines I'm not really trying to imitate the Schaefer actually I'm finding it quite easy uh, to produce the same quality of lines as okay. the Schaefer. It, it uh, seems to be giving me the same amount of feedback, although I've noticed this one tends to run dry on ink quickly, mm -hmm. although I expect that's something that it wouldn't qu happen quite so often if I weren't dipping it in yeah, here. Yeah, It, you know, we'll, when you do fill them up and... and stuff we'll see if there's a, a difference there um some pens may run a little drier than others and i can't remember what, how that one worked now that one you right now you haven't really been giving it the gas you've been you no, no. but why don't you get why don't you why don't you give it some gas to show the audience at home there you go. Yeah. There's some gas. I got a little bit of a drip going there, but that doesn't really bother me. <laughs> that might be because of the uh, the feed might have hit the page, though I don't think it did. Oh, yeah. There it went. Yeah. yeah see, there the you're doing it. just leaning up. Yeah. So we're just going to have to work with what we've got here. <laughs> okay. And oh, is that... Uh, actually, go back to the Schaefer and, and hold the pen upside down to make those really big... That those painted oh, yeah. lines... I mean, this is something that I haven't done in a long time, but but uh, Patrick did, and it really made it really was fun. Uh, where yeah, he, it's almost uh, that's why I love um, fountain pens because you can do this with them. You can do it with a crow quill, but you're yeah. probably gonna break crow quill. Yeah, I'm These, trying. These it uh, it becomes almost like working with a brush, which yeah. is just wonderful. Yeah. Well, I I'm trying to do that right now on my pen upside down here but it's I think it's not working as well and I don't know why but it's saying don't do the, oh now it's doing it I just wasn't holding it right but anyway go back to the Faber again I'm sorry I, I, yep I've got it right here okay so um, you know pressing on the gas with that you get a line that's maybe twice as thick as the thickest Schaefer or maybe even three times um, but you're you tend to like being very light on the pen it seems 
Yeah, you know, that's that's how I usually tend to do things. Okay. And yet your your drawings are seem so almost aggressive the way they're drawn, and, and because they're so quick, I guess maybe. Yeah. Well, I, I showed you Heinrich Clay yesterday. Yeah. yeah. And uh, if for those of you watching, if you don't know who Heinrich Clay is, I would I would advise you to Google him right now. He has that sort of line quality that I admire, and Rembrandt yeah. had that too in his etchings. Yeah. And that's something I have always strived to to imitate. Yeah. But two, there's also and. Here's somebody I've wanted to ask you about. Do you know um, George Harriman? No. He did a comic called Crazy Cat. Okay. Yeah, and that's that's another one I'd advise people to look up because he's his pen work is is really beautiful, uh, and it's abstracted and jazzy in all the right ways for me. He's another person who I really admire, but he's different from that uh, from that dry thing. He's okay, really and heavy. he and he, he was old fashioned, right? I mean, he's an oh yeah, he was he's uh, from the nineteen twenties to okay, all up yeah. to the nineteen fifties. Yeah, I'm just looking at him now. Yeah, I do know his stuff, and it is it it is amazing how he can. It looks like he's using. Uh, a really broad, fat, flexible nib, uh, yeah. and he's able to do a you know a drawing of a cat in ten lines. I know, and yeah. and he's and a lot of the lines just seem so absolutely random. Mm -hmm. uh, they they don't really correspond, but they work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I'm lo loading up some images right now to just. Uh, show that the the people at home. Um, I'm just trying to find an image that is good enough here. Um, yeah, looking at at cartoons of early cartoons. Um, here's, you know, this, the, 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 uh, resolution on this particular image isn't great. I'm just w zooming in on a little mouse running by with his little dust. Yes, that, <laughs> that is, that is, do you like, do you like, uh, Windsor McKay? Oh yeah, I like Windsor McKay pretty well. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's got that sort of Art Nouveau style going yeah. for him. He also, and I he mean, he's a very quick draftsman. But, he, but his, I guess I'm thinking of a lot of his drawings are very, very detailed and intricate, and you know, straight lines and French curves and stuff like that. But it look, I mean, they look beautifully, carefully rendered. Um, but the. the but the crazy cat uh, is more my speed. I really like seeing the muscle behind a, a line, and um, you know, just the expression and the immediacy, I guess, of of it. And sometimes uh, Windsor McKay's things are just a little bit remote for me because they're so perfect. Um, yeah, he's. He's very deadpan almost with his <laughs> yes. his line work. Yeah, and in fact, his characters all have that sort of deadpan. I don't know what I'm doing here. Look too. Yeah, but. I mean that's that's the part of his drawings that I, his stories that I don't like. They never seem very. There's not much emotion going on there. They're all just. Yeah, and and I, I've noticed too. If you actually read his text, I mean, first of all, it's very difficult to read because he didn't. He obviously didn't care yeah. about the text at all. <laughs> no. But uh, if you read it, the, the characters are saying the most banal things. They, they are. They, it is. They, they, their, their world is as boring as. I mean, they make it sound as boring as 
the real world is and yet yeah they... yeah i mean it's amazing they're doing these incredible things go like they're getting on top of beds that are walking over the city they're yeah. they're breaking glass princesses yeah and then shrinking and enlarging and it. they start describing it oh my and oh dear and uh-oh <laughs> Yeah, it would be like someone on LSD saying, "Oh, that's kind of a pretty color." Yeah, <laughs> and that's as and that's exactly. as exciting as they get. Oh, that's my someone saying I've got mail here. So let's figure out what that is. I'm, I'm due to meet a client later today, and I just want to find out if that's going to happen. Um, no. Travelocity trying to tell me that I can buy a trip somewhere. Oh, oh boy. You better buy that trip before, it, I guess, it goes away. I don't know what happens to... Well, I also have an eBay t thing telling me that my bid on something has been overbid. And it's a Waterman safety pen. And they are... Their pens... If you were able to go back in time and look at the pens that artists were using, fountain pens that artists were using, you would probably find a Waterman safety pen on their desk because these were pens that were designed to hold India ink. And oh. the, the way they work is the, uh, when you're done with the pen, you screw a little knob at the bottom of the pen and the entire uh, nib retracts into the barrel of the pen and essentially it is submerged in the ink. So it can't dry out. But it also implies, I think, that you have to keep the pen completely full all the time. So, uh, but, but it, they were pens that were designed for artists and for stenographers that worked in courts who would use have to write with ink that was permanent. And um, I, I bought one on eBay recently. It was a big, broad, stub-nibbed nib on it. But they also made pens that were for artists, that were flexible-nibbed pens. And that's what this one on eBay is. It's a, a pen that probably is as flexible as any Waterman. Um, and so I, I have to decide whether I want to bid more than I said I was going to bid or not. So speaking of Waterman, let's get, your, get the Waterman out for the last, we're at 23 minutes, so let's spend the last maybe five minutes out with the Waterman. Okay. Um, and one thing I want to say about the the Faber yeah. before we move on is just that it it doesn't seem at least right now to have the same kind of hustle that the Schaefer has. It uh, it it produces the line, but it produces a real dry line. Okay. The Schaefer the Schaefer I feel like I could I've been able to get a little bit more out of. Okay. The and it might be because of the nib. Or the uh, the fact that you're dipping it. So when you fill it with ink, yeah. the the Faber may be wetter and more consistent. Um, it also might be, you know, I do have one pen that I've been enjoying a lot. That when you write with it at its finest point, it seems to be very faint with its ink flow. It's almost like you're, it's not putting out enough ink. And I like it. I like that effect for drawing, I think I would hate it if I was using it as a calligraphy pen because it's not, it's not dark enough. So it's not only, it's not only as if it's making a line that's thin, it's making a line that's gray. And um, I might find that annoying. So I think that might be the problem with that, with that Faber. Okay, now it's the Waterman. This is a yeah. Waterman nib that's probably from the 30s or 20s. The, the pen itself is from the 40s, but the nib might be older. And it's it's the most flexible one that I sent him. And I sent him uh, three pens to try out. And 
I'm not adverse to s sending pens uh, for other artists who's, uh, who I trust. Uh, it's not that I don't, it's not that I don't trust all artists, but uh, I trust them not only not to send them back if they don't want them, but I trust them not to break them. And it was, it was clear by looking at the way Patrick was drawing that he understood the tools he was using. And there are some artists and some calligraphers and some writers who, and I watch them draw or I see the drawings or lettering that they do or the writing they do, and I'd say, I, am not, I will not trust them with this pen because they pressed down too hard. They're too, they're not sensitive enough. And I could, I could tell that you were sensitive. So now you're using the Waterman pen and look at, again, class, look at people, how you're holding the pen. He's holding the pen like he's uh, described it earlier, like he's having salad with the queen. He's holding the pen uh, very unlike an artist would hold a pen, I think. You're holding it very differently. Um, and I described it as well, like he's holding, he's take, he's, he's holding a dog by a leash. You know, the dog is doing the work. He's just tugging it from time to time. And uh, that's when you remembered the Paul Clay quote, which I'll let you describe. Yeah, Paul Clay was an abstract artist and always worked with watercolor and uh, pen and ink drawings, uh, too, I believe. Yeah, a lot of pen but, and ink. But uh, he always described his, his work as taking a line for a walk. Yeah. Well, it looks like you're doing that. And and uh, I, I mentioned earlier, to my, in an earlier video, of watching my favorite artist of all time is Saul Steinberg and he holds his dip pen nibs way back further back than you're holding your pen by another you know twice as far back almost but it's but it's a dip pen it doesn't have a cap that's going to fall off so um but it's just it was amazing watching him I never would have guessed he would do that but it makes perfect sense to me now, having seen him. Now, I know I've heard the name Saul Steinberg. What did he do? Well, the f most famous thing he did, which is turned into posters, is the New Yorker's view of the world uh, for the New Yorker cover. And it shows Fifth Avenue and Sixth Avenue and Seventh Avenue and Central Park. And then way off in the distance is Nebraska well, New Jersey first, Nebraska, and then Japan, way off in the distance. And it, they're very cartoony. And his line work in his normal cartoons, his cartoons don't have captions. Rarely do they have captions. Uh, only when he was doing work for the uh, U.S. Army in World War II, I think, uh, did he write captions, which weren't needed. Um, but his, you'll, you'll love his line work, Patrick, if you, uh, when you look at his, his stuff, very, yeah. very cartoony, oh. very, very funny, very, the line work is both clumsy looking and virtuosic at the same time. Um, Your line work is always very virtuosic looking, and it may look sloppy, but it never looks clumsy. His work, his he has lines that sometimes look like they're done by a child, and but then he'll he'll do this flourish at the end, which is just amazing. So the thickest line you can get from that is maybe the one you just made. Yeah, somewhere around here. Yeah. You might be able to go a little bit wider, but you'd have to push down pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So this this pen has has the greatest range. It probably isn't as fine as the Schaefer was, but it's it can be pretty fine. 
and this one has been my favorite to work with yeah. so far. Yeah, that just is... because it's so eager to do just about anything. Yeah, well, the the, the Schaefer was like a pretty good station wagon. The, you're you're using a Ferrari, and you you can't help yeah. but, you can't help but want to go fast. Uh, exactly. And, and turn on a dime and downshift and upshift that really you know it really wants you to go all sorts of different ways whereas the Schaefer wants you to stay in the speed limit this one wants yeah. you to to just go over the speed limit a little bit no one's gonna watch you there's no police car behind that billboard to catch you yeah and if there was the fuck it it's up. it's worth it's worth the fine it'll pay yeah it's worth worth the speeding ticket. You'll even go to court. You'll even spend a day in court telling the jurors how much fun it was to go 100 miles an hour in a 30 mile an hour school zone. Yeah. And you so what, you know, to, that, that, you that, may have to pay a fine yeah. at the end of the jury, but then you'll get to see the judge yeah. uh, drive away <laughs> in his uh, Oldsmobile <laughs> while you pass him by in your yeah. Ferrari. Yeah, and and that kid that you hit, he'll be out of the hospital in a year or two. He'll be fine. Yeah, maybe. You know, people they people they walk, make some they they make some very very competent prosthetics these days. They'll be they'll be. Well, okay. no, that kid got into too much damn trouble than it was. You know. Yeah, yeah, he he should have <laughs> looked. I, you've been trying to get him to sit down for years. <laughs> I mean, now he's finally going to sit down and shut up. You know? <laughs> Yes. Well, as soon as his jaw is taken out of the thing, he'll start talking again. But he'll he'll be quiet for a year. So anyway, on this on this morbid topic, we've now crossed the half hour thing, which I think is is enough for this. And you're also kind of breaking up here your image. So what I'll do is uh, I'll just have you try to hold that picture as close to the camera as you can and we'll see if it focuses up again and then we'll say goodbye to the audience okay. we don't have to say goodbye to each other sure. but okay. but I uh, I just want to see if the camera you know it's it's always hard to know what's where the problem is but you're you are breaking up at your end you're becoming yeah. pic pixelated and it might be your connection or who knows what so okay and i will be sure to post this on yeah. my yeah. instagram account okay uh, good. good which will look uh, immeasurably better i'm sure let okay. me know if you can see it here well hold it as close as you can and you sort of it's it it you've you've you channeled dr seuss here in that drawing you have to move it a little bit to the Ooh. You you have a little bit of gr Grinch 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 eyes going on there. Uh, you're still not quite yeah. in the center of the camera, but in the center, move it to your to to its. Well, pull it closer to you. Put it that way. Okay, like this. Uh, down. Or, or rather, like this, and then. There. The, now I'm seeing <laughs> the eyes. Okay. Uh, this is, we'll have to keep learning how to, to make this work better. It's beginning pretty clear, crisp, but say goodbye to the audience. Petra. Goodbye to the audience. Yeah. Bye audience and bye audience. And we'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>